All right, we are continuing our discussion of Aeneid, book one, starting at line 187. Aeneas just saw, caught sight of three deer um, wandering around on the shore. Constatit hic, arcumque manu, celerisque sagitas coripuit, fidus quae telegerebat acates. Okay, that's a good place to stop. Actually, coripuit is a better place to stop. We will talk about that in a second. So Aeneas is still our verb. So first Aeneas constitutes, and he does this, hic, which is an adverb meaning here. Let's see what else Aeneas does. Arcumque manu calorisque sagitas coripuit. That's another good place to stop because, well, the commas tell us it's a new clause. Let's see, we've got an accusative, arcum, then we have an ablative, manu, and then we have calories, don't be tricked. We know that that is not really an is, but rather, rather the variant for the es, accusative plural, calories. And calories sagitas, of course, is a noun adjective pair. So we've got calories sagitas. So we have two accusatives. We have the arcum and the calories sagitas. Whatever Aeneas is doing, he's doing it to those two things. He's using manu and neowap here. Oh, here's the verb. He grabbed the arcum and the calories sagitas with his manu. Okay, now you can see that we have another clause here because we have fetus after the comma. This is a relative clause that starts there and ends there. We see it's a relative clause, of course, because of the relative pronoun, quae. Fetus quae tela gerebat acates. Actually, quae is going with tela, interrogative. And acates is a subject here. Fetus is an adjective that modifies acates. Acates is a friend of Aeneas. He is the Robin to Aeneas's Batman. Acates and Aeneas go together just like Robin and Batman. So apparently, Akadis was along for the ride and his job was to carry stuff for Aeneas. Okay, continuing. Ductoresque ipsos primum, capita alta ferentis, cornabus arboreis sternit. So that is another good place to stop because we have another clause ending at sternit. So what do we have? We have Ductores, ductores, sorry, which goes with ipsos. So ductores is an ambiguous form. It could be nominative or accusative, but since oops, ipsos must be accusative, we know that ductores is also accusative. And he was referring to the leaders of this herd of deer that he sees up in this section. So something is happening to the leaders themselves. Primum is an adverb, meaning at first. And then, let's see, we have capita alta, which is another ambiguous noun-adjective pair. The high heads could either be nominative or accusative, plural. But I'm anticipating that it's accusative. Why am I anticipating that's accusative? Oh, because ferentes is a transitive verb, and it would be great if it took a direct object with capita alta. Ferentus, of course, I'm sorry, it's actually a present active participle, but it, being a participle, it is transitive. And it really, again, is that ES, but instead Virgil has the IS, and it is referring to the leaders themselves. So apparently, Aeneas is going to do something to the leaders themselves who are carrying their high heads. Let's see what he's going to do. Oh, before we find out what he does, we have another noun adjective pair. We have high heads with cornibus arboreis, a neowop, describing apparently what they've got on their high heads, something like that. And then here's the verb, sternit. If you are ever wondering what sternit is, the fourth principle part is where you get the word strata, which is a dish where you lay everything all together and cook it. Because sternit means to lay low to place laying down, which is what you do if you kill the Ductores Ipsos. Continuing on, Tum Vulgus et omnum miscet afgains telles nemora inter frandia turbam. 
Okay, Aeneas is continuing his hunting. First, he knocked down the leaders, then Walgus. The crowd. When's the last time we saw the word Walgus? I think it was back in that simile. At omnum miscit agames. Tell us Nemora. Inter frontia turbum. Okay, we have omnum, which is an adjective. And it's particularly interesting because omnum modifies a noun that is really far away. It modifies turbum in the next line. So he does something to the Walgus, and he's going to do something to the entire crowd. Let's see what he does. Miskits, he mixes it up. Agains telus nemora inter frandia. Okay, we've got a participle, agains, and this is nominative singular, present active, notice the ns, and it's modifying Aeneas. Telis, it's another neowap, not in the ablative without a preposition, talking about how Aeneas does this. And we have a prepositional phrase with nemora inter frandia. Notice Virgil breaks a couple rules here. He's got nemora positioned before the preposition. Usually the nouns come after the preposition. Frandia is the adjective that modifies nemora. Normally it would be frontia inter nemora, but hey, he's Virgil. He must know what he's doing. Nec prius obstetit, quam septum in gentia victor corpora fundat humi. Okay, here's a new feature. It's called tamesis. That's where you take a word and you cut it into pieces. Prius quam is one word, but Virgil split it into two separate words. Nec prius abstidit. Nor did he stop prius quam before, before what? Septum is indeclinable. Septum in gentia. So we've got two adjectives, and it needs to modify something. Here it is, corpora. And then we have victor as a nominative. So nor did he stop before as a victor, victor. He fundats the septum in gentia corpora on the ground. This is probably not the best passage to read if you are a member of PETA. Et numerum cum nauibus aequit. Okay, we have a boring prepositional phrase here. We have numerum, which is of course accusative, acting as the direct object of aequit, and the subject of aequit is still Aeneas. So apparently Aeneas killed seven deer, and there was a particular reason why he picked that number.